few weeks ago we could try out the new BMW, let's say, mid-size hard or harder enduro, the new F800 GS, and now we got its smaller but brother, the totally tarmac or uh, public road oriented touring enduro of BMW, the F750 GS. <laughs> It's very easy to find out from the outside for the first look that this is really an asphalt-oriented motorbike because uh, the suspension travels are much shorter than in the 850 version. In the front we have only 151 millimeters and in the rear 177 millimeters and the uh, tire sizes are also different. At least the first one is uh, now smaller, uh, only 19 inch rim we have and the front tire is 110 millimeters wide and in the rear we have the same size uh, the tire size is the same because it's uh, 150 per 70 and uh, 17 millimeter the rim, uh, the, rim. Uh, the only difference is that uh, in the rear we also have uh, an aluminium alloy wheel and not a spoken one the number in the name of the bike 750 is uh, not really true because the engine itself is the same uh, cubic capacity 853 cubic centimeter it has and the same inline two cylinder construction as in the big brother uh, but the electronic part of it is different and that's why it is weaker uh, the power output is 77 brake horsepower and we have 83 newton meter maximum torque and it is also very very important that the bike just as we ordered with an a2 uh, modification so it can be ordered and got with 48 brake horsepower and can be driven with an a2 driver's license as well a lot of you can ask that what this 77 brake horsepower is enough for honestly uh, as we already took more than 700 kilometers with this bike we can surely say that this is for the public road use absolutely enough because uh, the gear ratios are pretty long uh, for example the engine is turning only uh, 3750 at 100 kilometers per hour and even at 130 it's under 5000 and as it can be turned up to uh, 8500 it, it really can be used even for dynamic riding or even with passenger for uh, overtakes or anything else so this is really enough this power uh, for what you can use on a normal road and uh, we just tried it once that uh, according to its own speedometer the top speed is just reaching the 200 kilometers per hour of course with real speed it's a little bit under it and one of the most important things which really lifts out this bmw f750 gs from its class is the equipment of it so all the extras you can order for the motorbike of course the quality of the materials and the whole production also makes it a premium motorbike uh, so it's really uh, proudly can wear this uh, blue and white emblem but uh, the things that you can order and put into it are uh, really uh, all in all a package which uh, was not existing so far in this category only on the much higher category just a few things the led headlights the connectivity dashboard which we are going to speak about later the navigation uh, preparation the heated grips the cruise control uh, then a quick shifter for example which is very very good uh, in the rear section we have a dynamic ESA which uh, changes all the parameters of the rear suspension only from a few button pushes and also partially automatically which is very very good so all of these things and the whole brake system with the cornering ABS so safety and comfort uh, extra features are making this uh, motorbike really a different category inside its own class what really makes unique this whole connectivity system of the let's say dashboard or the bike itself is the connectivity possibilities of your mobile phone helmet and things like this because some basic uh, issues of it we already showed you the 850 gs's review but let's check out other things which uh, there were missing 
So we have an application called BMW Motorrad Connected, which we can download to our mobile phone, even if we, if we, even if we have iOS or Android system is the same. It connects with the motorbike and then shows all the important data about uh, our bike. And for example, it also shows the next gas station and only one push. Uh, we can start the guardian, guidance and uh, from that moment it always shows us the navigation uh, infos on the dashboard. So we can just start any kind of navigation and we can all the way see on the 6.5 inch dashboard where uh, we want to go and what, where we have to turn uh, to any direction. So it's so easy. Uh, the navigation is always running on the mobile phone, but the informations are on the dashboard and it's really very important. But it also has uh, the media of our phone, so we can always see what kind of music we are just listening and we can clearly hear it in our Bluetooth helmet. And it can also uh, recognize our mobile phone data. So for example, with a few movements, we can move to our phone book, start calls or anything like this. And we only need our left hand and uh, two fingers for it. So we never have to uh, release the handlebars. For the 750 GS, we can all order all the four possible riding modes of BMW. And uh, these are really uh, differing in pretty many uh, characters. For example, we have the rain mode where the throttle response is also very, we can say, stupid. So it reacts very slow for the throttle, uh, the traction control, from which we also have the dynamic traction control, which is the let's say highest level thing in this category in the motorbike industry now uh, so the traction control is much uh, more safe and the abs is also absolutely on the top uh, we also have the road mode which is the most typical so for uh, everyday use the big difference is the throttle response related to the rain mode uh, we also have the dynamic mode where the whole suspension is much uh, let's say sporty and the throttle response is also more direct and maybe even at least for me it sounded like that the uh, sound of the bike is a little bit nicer or more sporty and finally we have the enduro mode where the rear suspension is a little bit softer so it's better for let's say off-road riding and uh, the throttle response and everything else is also uh, working like that and what is very important that uh, and making a difference between the previous model the 700 GS in this 750 GS we can uh, change the rear suspension preload as well also from a simple uh, button push so if, if we are having a running engine and I just uh, change the preload of the rear section for two persons so the passenger is just going to sit uh, behind me you can clearly see how the rear section of the motorbike is uh, lifting up and reaching the maximum preload for two person riding as the frame uh, and the whole ergonomics is the same as on the 850 GS, the seat position is also the same, so it's absolutely proper and very, very comfortable. The knee angle is uh, pretty good, so it's not, uh, let's say, making you tired even on long distances. The handlebar distance, heights, widths is everything is absolutely good for the really nice and upright uh, riding position. And uh, it's also uh, very good uh, the mirrors because they are wide enough and you can see the traffic pretty well in these uh, factory mirrors. The only problematic thing we can say is the windshield because it's pretty small. Although it makes uh, takes out the wind pressure from your whole upper body, but for an average uh, rider even who is shorter than me, uh, the Helmet is going to be full with bugs and the uh, wind noise, let's say at least on 130, 140 kilometers per hour, so highway speed, the wind noise is also pretty high. This bike we could also try for longer distance with passenger as well. And our passenger said that uh, 
the whole riding position is also very comfortable for her because uh, the position of the foot pegs is wide enough so it's good sitting position and uh, the keeping possibility is also very comfortable so the bike is really well usable even for two person all in all we can say that the new f750 gs opens new dimensions in its own class because it's a very very good usable motorbike even for longer tours even for everyday city running but with its equipment it really lifted out from its own class and uh, afterwards as it is now uh, it's really good to think about is it worth to buy a big gs or this one is enough maybe for many many riders all around the world if you liked our video Please push a like for it, subscribe for our channel and watch our previous reviews as well.